Good morning everybody, welcome to our virtual morning service from Carters Lane Baptist Church. With a change from the clocks to Greenwich Mean Time from British Summer Time and winter is coming soon and chill is in the air, well it's a time when we have got to keep each other warm in spirit to keep us safe and well and keep an eye on those who are vulnerable in our local, national and international communities. So here we are together. Today's theme is a reminder of the true nature of what it means to be a believer. I'm grateful that Phil is with us and will join us shortly but firstly let's pray together. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest, they asked Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to learn how to worship you as you deserve. Help us, Lord, to grow into the sorts of worshippers that you are seeking, who worship you in spirit and in truth. Not worshippers just in a service, but in the service of our lives. We pray that our lives may be ones that honour you in all we say and all we do, in all the circumstances of life throughout the day and as we drift into sleep at its close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our thoughts today are about what it means to be a believer. And our reading is incorporated in the next song that you're going to hear. It's based on Matthew 22. Do you think that's the way we should insist deacons to read the readings in church? Well, I don't know. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody should do it that way. They're happy, won't they? Yeah. You're right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope all is well. Um, for a change, the weather in Hell's Island is a little bit 
this morning. So uh, after the heavy rain from yesterday, so we rejoice about that. Um, today's notices are mainly a plea uh, for support and for generating ideas. Um, I want to start though, with a thank you from Lynn Riley, uh, whose birthday it was yesterday. And uh, many of you will be aware that there were loads of messages on WhatsApp yesterday. Well, Lynn's not on WhatsApp, but I did phone her yesterday evening and I did read the messages to her. And she's very grateful indeed for, uh, for them all. So thank you uh, for that. And well done, Lynn. Uh, Lynn has also offered, though, uh, as Lynn would, that if anybody wishes to go to the church um, to open, uh, and she's prepared to open up uh, for anybody who wants to go for their own individual prayers. Uh, if you think you would like to take advantage of that offer, you need to contact her a few days previous, preferably by the previous Sunday, so that you can plan a week. Uh, but she's offered to do that for people. So if you're interested, uh, give her a call. Um, can you keep Olive Renard's family in your prayers this week? Um, Olive's funeral is on Friday at Broome Church. And uh, our thoughts are with her son Ian uh, and his family uh, at this sad time. Olive and her family, as many of you will know, were very active at Carter's Lane some years ago. And that's a more pleas for help and for ideas. First of all, Shaw is looking for people to help with these live stream services, uh, people to do prayers, people to do the readings and, and, and so on. And it would be good uh, to share the tasks out. And if we got enough people, it wouldn't be too onerous on any one uh, person. So have a think about that. And if you're interested, have a chat with Shaw, and I'm sure we can support uh, ways of, uh, of doing this. And there could be all sorts of, of normal ways of, of, of sharing experiences in these live stream services. I also want to uh, uh, plead for support for the Remembrance Sunday. Uh, uh, it's a couple of weeks away. Uh, in last night's email update, I did ask for ideas and thoughts possibly uh, along the lines of some artwork or some creative uh, work, poetry or whatever. Uh, we have uh, asked Becky McCartney to come up with some ideas for decorating the, the church. I think she's got some ideas uh, to go in the porch. And I know sure has got ideas for the morning service on that day. But it would be good uh, if you've got other ideas and we could share them via emails or on WhatsApp. So have a think about that. In a similar way, we need ideas to think about our toy service this year. I must admit I've forgotten about this until Rob Willett spoke to me yesterday. Uh, apparently Elaine's come up with an idea that we could open up the hall of the church for a couple of hours, say on a Saturday, and people could bring their toy donations, leave them at the church, and then we could pray for them and bless them uh, on the following day's live stream service. If you remember, we usually support uh, Birmingham City Missions Christmas appeal uh, with our toy service. So have a think about that. I think we ought to be able to do something constructive to help in that. We usually do it at the end of November to give City Mission time to process the, uh, the presents, etc. Also, Christmas is only a couple of months away. We could do is perhaps some ideas of what we can do about Christmas. I mean, we usually have an autumn Christmas fair. Are there ways that we could do things in a virtual way, like we did with the garden party? Are there things that we could do uh, uh, for, for ourselves and share them? And there must be lots of creative ideas, uh, artwork, photography, poetry, um, needlework, whatever. Yeah, we need a focus at the moment. I think folks said uh, it would be good if you, uh, people could come up with ideas and, and suggestions. Um, so have a think on, on that. Um, I'm not aware of any birthdays for this particular week, but I could well be wrong on, on that. But I do want to retrospectively uh, wish Sheila Sheen or hope that she had a very happy birthday last Monday. Uh, I won't tell you. Uh, 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 uh,
tune that in that best which is good uh, to you. So that's it for the notices. Have a think on the things I've uh, asked for and uh, get back to us if you've got any ideas. And um, yeah, thank you to Shaw for leading this morning's service and hopefully some people will come forward Shaw with offers of help for future services. <laughs> thank you very much, Phil. Yes, I, I do hope they will. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's good fun doing this, but I think if you're either able to pre-record something and send it on WhatsApp or want to do what Phil is doing at present and appear live um, in Zoom, I don't think you have to sit in his new kitchen, though, so you can do it from your own home. Is that right, Phil? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I can come and decorate that home before I have <laughs> We've talked a lot about looking for ways in which we can support things and through our offering and through our other talents we actually are giving to God in order for God to, through them to bless the world. So let us make our dedicatory offering prayer now. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father we thank you that you have given us so much and we pray now that the financial gifts, our talents, our time might be used well in your service. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's return to the great and first commandment. And I'm doing it slightly differently on a, on a laptop today to get the, the PowerPoint there. Hope you can see that. Yet again, they're trying to catch Jesus out. In Matthew's Gospel, we're getting ever closer to the crucifixion of Jesus and the disputes between the religious leaders and the preacher from Nazareth are getting louder and more threatening. And today's trick question is a challenge to his theology. Come on, preacher. Which is the most important? Which of the 1,613 commandments in the Old Testament is the most important? And these are lawyers asking the question with years of accumulated theological wisdom. They know their stuff. And here's the chance to both show off their learning and shut this uncouth upstart up. <laughs> Except it doesn't work and they are hoisted on their own petard. Some editions of the Bibles we use have very helpful footnotes, but Jesus wouldn't have needed them. Very straightforward, he says in this passage in Matthew, and in summary, it's this. Love God with everything that you've got, and make sure you love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. Everything else, Jesus says, boils down to these two commandments. As he says... On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God and love your neighbour. And the justification for this? Well, here it is. Because the book of the law, the parchments of the Torah contained it in the first five books of what we now call the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. So what were the two things that he said? Well, First of all, it was love God. Love God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. And that is straight from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. And the rest of that chapter says that loving God is so important, you should remind yourself and your children all the time. These words, which are known as the Shema, are stored in the black tefillin, which are worn on a Jew's head during prayer and ceremonies, and also tied to a Jew's arm, near the head and the heart, as I used to explain to my students at school. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind constant reminder but more than that because in Deuteronomy 6 it also says you should write these on your doorposts and these words are also kept in a little container called a mezuzah which is 
fastened to almost every door in a Jewish home. Still today, as a Jew passes through the door, they are encouraged to kiss their fingers and lightly touch the mezuzah to show respect to God. And as I also ask two more questions of my students, hey, how often does a Jewish person go through those doors each day? And what does that say about the importance of God? Each time a Jewish person passes through a door in their home, they are passing the words that say, love God with everything you've got. And what if we were in that crowd? Interested to see what will happen next. Perhaps, like the religious leaders, we may have realised, a little shamefacedly, that we, even today, walk through, walk past our own spiritual doors and have forgotten God. That too often we've become so preoccupied with our busy, crowded lives that God was left out. He was there all along, of course. And so the first thing, to remember and to be glad that God is always with us. And we have to recognise that. Thank God that he is. We cannot do it on our own. And then secondly, it's the idea of love your neighbour. Love your neighbour, how? As you love yourself. Turn back a few pages in the Old Testament from Deuteronomy to Leviticus chapter 19. And there it is, word for word. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. I went back to reread that chapter. In the New International Version of the Bible, it has the heading, Various Laws. But this is a clear subsection, and the lawmakers, the godly scribes who recorded it, build it up very clearly. The list is astonishing. Here we go. Takes a deep breath. You must not deceive others. You must not defraud others. You must not withhold payment when money is owed. You must not cause problems for people who have a difficulty with their sight or their mobility. You must not show favouritism. You must not speak slander. You must not put people in danger. You must not seek revenge or keep grudges. In fact, you must love your neighbour as you love yourself. And it's a simple acid test, isn't it? Do you want to experience these things yourself? No. So don't make it the experience of others either. School teachers, me included, have so often used this idea with pupils. Would you like that to happen to you? No, sir. Well, don't do it to someone else. Oh, yes. And say sorry. Many of us have left school and still have lessons to learn. We justify doing to others what we wouldn't tolerate for ourselves. And God says to us, to me and to you, don't do it to someone else if you don't want it done to you. And say sorry. And we are not alone. Politicians do it. Think about the justifications that have been made to avoid helping families in very real need with free school meals. It's the crack den defence, my lud. Did you see that? That's why we don't help people, because that's what they're sitting in. Thank God for food banks. Thank God for Marcus Rashford. Thank God for local councillors and businesses who have shown how to get godly done, who have put themselves in the position of saying, I wouldn't want it happening to me, so how can I let it happen to others? 
bless you. And bless you. Because in so many ways, you have done this. I have seen people who love God and love their neighbour. I've seen it often among those sharing in this service today. Bless you. And of course, we can always improve. And maybe sometimes we have let things slip. But bless you for when you get godly done. Love God with everything you've got and love your neighbour. Words with a relevant message. Love God. Love your neighbour. Oh, and my favourite phrase. Get godly done. Thank God he is with us and when we love him and love our neighbour, we discover the power of his gracious love for us. Seen in Jesus Christ. Seen through our fellow pilgrims. And seen whichever doors in life we pass through. Because his gracious love is sufficient for all our needs. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let's continue now with our prayers. Heavenly Father, we confess before you the times when we have forgotten. We've forgotten to love you as fully as we should. We've forgotten to love our neighbour as much as they need. Forgive us, we pray. And as we say sorry to you, may our desire for forgiveness be reflected not just in the words we say, but in the actions we take, even in the next few days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all those of our neighbours who are struggling right now. We pray for those who have to cope with so many insecurities that threaten livelihoods and health and purpose. In a moment of silence, we remember those especially in need of prayer, in the quiet of our hearts and the peace of our home. We pray for those who can make decisions which will bring change. Give them wisdom, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our world, recognising too many inequalities and praying for a greater sense of brotherhood and sisterhood, which takes no regard of ability or colour of skin or any other characteristic that people have used to divide and destroy. And as we seek that peace for our world, help us to play our part in it so that others may be touched and inspired by your love, which they find in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray together as Jesus taught us, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing in this service. Thank you to Phil. Um, I don't know if he's still there. Let's have a look. Oh, 
Oh, no. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, for uh, everything that you do for us during the week. And we've got many others who do all sorts of things, including the Time Lord, who I believe has changed the time on the various church clocks. There's been, an in there's been an interesting little message going around Facebook which says, please don't put the clocks back. We've had enough of 2020 already. Yeah, don't need the extra hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's an extra hour for us to do some good things with. So thank you for sharing in this service. Um, thank you to Will as well, whose music we heard and we'll hear a little bit of at the end. And thank you to you for being part of this today, wherever you are. God bless you.